book of Nehemiah. I want to share with you this morning on intimidation. Intimidation. Seven things you must know about intimidation. Seven things you must know about. And I'm preaching from um, one of Bishop's books. It's a very beautiful book. There's a loyalty on this loyalty series. I want the whole place to be very quiet. Um, this one is called Those Who Pretend. Now this is going to be an immunization for somebody. Immunization means you are being given an injection to prevent a disease from happening to you. Ask your neighbor, perchance have you been immunized before? Ask him, can you show me your, 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 the scar? I can see one nurse trying to show it. Intimidation. And um, as usual, I, I always like to mention why I'm preaching a particular topic. Can I share with you? This preaching is for two groups of people. Two. Ashes, I really need you to be alert and alive. Today is a safe day service, so children will be children. But they shouldn't influence adults. Adults should be adults. I Meaning adults should be in charge. Not children in charge. Bible says, Woe unto you, land, when your prince is a child. They eat in the morning. They eat for pleasure and not for strength. Meaning that when a land or an environment is being ruled by children, the word is trouble. Woe. Hallelujah. So in as much as once a year we allow you to do what you have to do, let's also have a good service. Can we have a good service? So this message is for two groups of people. Are you ready to hear? The first group is people who have a desire to start something in their life and maybe they are being held back by circumstances, by environment, by the background, by people. Are you listening to me? May you start something that you want to start in Jesus' name. Whether it's a marriage, whether it's a project, whether it's a business. You can be young, but you can start setting up your own company in Jesus' name. The second group of people I'm speaking to are people who probably started something and they have abandoned it. Halfway, they've lost team. Halfway, they have been intimidated. I declare by the finger of God that you shall complete that which you started in Jesus' name. Are you listening to me? He who has begun a good thing in Christ Jesus, what shall he do? He shall surely complete it. You will complete. Push your, your neighbor, say you will complete that project. Can you imagine cooking food that you don't complete? You cannot eat it. In fancy, we call it obintado. Huh? So this morning, as we speak briefly on a topic, intimidation, I-N-T-I-M-I-D-A-T-I-O-N, -I -I intimidation, I want you to know that God is placing certain tools, certain keys in your hands to be able to do what you have to do in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture that I said we should read is Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 5 to verse 13. Can we read it together? If you are there, say, I'm there. Nehemiah chapter 6, sorry, verse 5 to verse 13. Come along with me. Satan does not want you to hear this message. Satan would want you to be afraid. You see, one will say intimidation. Somebody might say, Pastor, can you explain the word intimidation? Yes, I can explain it. Are you ready for me? Intimidation means the art of discouraging everybody say discourage 
Tell your neighbor, I will encourage you to serve God. I will not discourage you. Tell them first, in fact, this service, as I sit by you, I would encourage you to listen to the word and to be affected, to do great things. I will not discourage you in Jesus' name. Intimidation is the art of discouraging or deterring or controlling someone through fear. Intimidation. To do what? To control someone or to discourage someone or to prevent somebody from doing something and to cause him to do something else. Through what? Fear. Carol, are you listening to me? Intimidate. Intimidate. Actually, when you look at the word intimidate, everyone say intimidate. Learn a new language, a new word, sorry, as you come to church. One more time, intimidate. When you look at intimidate, the word timid is in the middle of intimidate. Timid. When we say someone is timid, it means he pulls back. He does what? Pulls back. He doesn't get involved. The Bible says in Jeremiah, it says, 1048, it says that cursed is he who, who does what? Bible students, cursed is he who does what? There's another Bible student also. He's a powerful guy. Cursed is he who withholded his sword from blood. Cursed is he who withholded his sword from drawing blood. In other words, when he has to do something, he recalls. He pulls back. Have you seen some of those people? They are with you, even as they are standing with you. They, they can't seem to come close or they are hovering around. When I was a younger person, I heard there were gentlemen, guys who were interested in young ladies. They will be friends to the young lady but they never said anything. I hear they used to be called Bese. It's a girl word for red driver ant. You see them around the mango tree. They circle hover around the mango. They don't eat the mango but those who are coming to eat the mango, they prevent them. Intimidators. We cancel all intimidators from this church in Jesus' name. You will start that project in Jesus' name. From today, nothing will stop you from beginning. You shall begin and you shall finish. I say you shall begin and you shall finish in Jesus' name. Sometimes money can be an intimidation. You want to marry and you look at the list that the family has given you. Say, hey, are they selling the girl or what? I saw one list. It was in two parts. The first part alone was over a thousand dollars. The first part, it was about five thousand Ghana cities. Part one. Oh. I say, hey. This one, before you present the list, you must give paracetamol to the guy. Who call the ambulance and everything. Nehemiah chapter 6, very quickly. Reading from verse 5. Then sent Sambalat. The background is concerning a man called Nehemiah who had been, a desire had been put in his heart to go and help to build the church of God, the walls of Jerusalem that was broken, the gates. And he was interested in doing exploits. May you be interested in doing exploits in Jesus' name. Don't sit down as a Christian and say, as for me, I, I, I just want to be a passerby. I, I, I just want, uh, 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 just, just something small. There are people when they ask them, what do you want for your birthday? They say, oh, anything anything and when you give them some small chocolates then they insult you they thank you but they insult you in their head it's because of what you said anything don't just say anything be interested in doing great things are you listening to me 
The Bible says, Then sent Sambalat, his servant, unto me, in like manner the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand. Verse 6. Wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews, they were talking to Nehemiah, he was trying to build the walls, and Sambalant, one of the opposition people, one of the intimidators, sent a letter to him. Are you listening to me? That you and the Jews, you are thinking of rebelling. For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to those words. Verse 7. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There's a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now. You see, they were accusing him of trying to do a coup d'etat. A lot of times, as a pastor, I've noticed that when I'm trying to even do good, somebody will find something wrong. That's why people do not want to be leaders. Young people, are you listening to me? In Africa, for example, we intimidate young people. We don't allow them to talk. We, when, when, when they are trying to express their opinion, we call them and say, hey, hey, she, she around, look around. Have you seen your age mate here? Come on! Get out! My father, how they say, he said, how did he say? Get out the hill. Get out the hill. Your father also used to say the same thing. I think it's a colonial term. Get out the hill. Actually, means get the hell out of here. Yeah. Get out the hill. Hey, come on. Hey, who has heard it before in the house? Hey, Chungu, hey, move. Come on for that. Shut up. We intimate, we intimate children. So they, don't, they are not able to express themselves. Are you listening to me? 